Andrew? Well, very quickly on your last point, um, as far as the Constitution goes, it shouldn't be an officer's obligation to arrest upon command. I think we should agree that even if Sue Allen uh, had nodded and meant, please have him removed, arrested, and charged, that that wouldn't be the standard by which we want officers to operate. We want Lieutenant Leach to make an independent observation of crime, and then arrest. Uh, as far as the procedure goes for a public meeting, uh, Ms. Allen indicates in her deposition that she didn't intend to have him arrested and charged or anything like that. It was, it was that just to interfere. Uh, there was no point in which Lieutenant Leach or I guess he was acting chief, uh, walked over and said, quiet down. And I think you can appreciate very much that an order coming from a police officer is going to carry much more weight uh, and much more gravity than anyone else. And we don't know if Mr. Bear would have just started to comply right there. Uh, it had been done exactly what they wanted if they would have said, can you please quiet down? You know, they're going to remove you if you don't. You know, they have the right to do it and give them the warning that I've heard given in this court, that I've heard given in other courts for people who are uh, uh, in the opinion of the moderator or other person in authority being disrupted. Uh, so as far as um, Lieutenant Leach's conduct, keeping the floodgates closed, that warning is what creates a situation where all of uh, my colleagues' concerns are addressed in that discourse continues, uh, people get to stay and witness the rest of uh, a meeting or, or whatever kind of speech that they're there for, and at the same time people understand uh, what the limits are of their conduct and when they can and cannot speak out and uh, don't have to get arrested and use all the resources that we're using today in order to determine uh, you know, how many seconds a person was out of order, or you know, how, you know, how, how deep their conduct was without having any sort of understanding of what the limit of his object was. So that, as far as Part 1 Article 8 and Part 1 Article 22 are concerned, uh, those warnings are crucial, and those warnings and that step-down process is exactly what keeps the floodgates closed. Okay, thank you. Mr. Berger. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. As defense counsel has indicated, uh, the court is in possession of the video uh, as well as the depositions. They speak for themselves. Um, with respect to the um, free speech and constitutionally protected, um, I would just start by citing um, 164 New Hampshire 370 Samuel. Bayon Delio, I believe it's pronounced. Um, state and federal constitution contain robust guarantees for free speech, but they do not offer absolute protection to all free speech under circumstances and in all places. The right to free speech under the state constitution may be subject to reasonable time, place, manner, regulation. They're all content neutral, now narrowly severe, and in a significant governmental interest. In this situation, Your Honor, Guilford Police uh, Acting Chief Lieutenant Leach was present at the meeting uh, at, the, at the request of the Guilford School Board, uh, specifically Kent Hemingway, concerns as to uh, crowd control, anticipating that there was going to be a large turnout for that meeting that night. It was, um, Sue Allen did open the meeting. She indicated that it was a, uh, a business meeting that People would be allowed to speak for two minutes um, to give public comment. It was not a question and answer period. And people were free to use that time to speak to uh, whatever content they wished to. His speech was not limited. Uh, with respect to specific issues, people were directed to go back to the school, um, to the administrator, the proper administrator, to deal with those issues outside of the school board meeting. The purpose of the meeting was for people to give their input for the school board to consider. As defense has indicated, um, the school board has reversed their decision with respect to how they handle um, this material now. So in the end, everything did 
his voice was heard, it did work effectively. Um, yes, he did speak <coughs> me, for two minutes, he spoke over his two minutes, and then he sat down and other people did speak. Uh, at one point in time, uh, another citizen got up and spoke, and towards the end of that, um, there was discourse uh, between the speaker and uh, the defendant, and uh, at which point in time, the defendant did go into speaking, interrupting him for a period of approximately 30 seconds, as the video will show. Um, during that time, Sue Allen, who was the chair of the board, um, attempted to uh, intervene, if you will, to ask him to stop speaking. There's discussion in the uh, motions to dismiss with respect to her having authority to, to do such a thing. Um, as is brought up as, again, who has that right to do that, to limit public speech? Well, in this situation, um, it's the state's position that the chairperson of the board, Sue Allen, would have the responsibility. If not her, who then would control the meeting? to maintain control, or attempt to maintain control of the meeting, in this case. <clears throat> she did do that. Uh, she attempted to uh, maintain control. Repeatedly she asked him um, to stop speaking. Um, repeatedly he refused. At one point in time, uh, yes, she does uh, look at Lieutenant Leach and nod in his direction. Uh, during depositions, as you'll see, there's no uh, pre-meeting discussion as to what that nod would mean. It was simply her indication asking him to intervene. Uh, so at that point in time, Lieutenant Leach did not know whether it was to intervene, to speak to him, to remove him. Lieutenant Leach did in fact inter intervene at that point in time and had a conversation with him. Um, Sue Allen, uh, in her deposition, you can read that uh, there was a conversation with him, uh, Lieutenant Leach asking him to stop speaking repeatedly, which he did not. In the video, you hear uh, Lieutenant Leach say twice, uh, you gotta go, approximately, I believe, three seconds apart, followed by, they're asking you to go, or they're asking you to leave. Uh, at that point in time, uh, he indicates that uh, he's not going to leave, that I guess you'll have to arrest me. I agree with defense counsel in that uh, Lieutenant Leach needs to make his own observations as to what is going on and assess the situation in and of itself. He is not there to take command from the chair board to make an arrest, either on their command or on the defendant's command. However, he needed to assess the situation. Um, previous to this, uh, the defendant had made the indication that, um, what are you going to do, arrest me? And it's all laid out in the previous uh, in the motions before you, such as objections. He had no intent of leaving. He had no intent of quieting down. So Lieutenant Leach took what action he felt was necessary, and he asked him, you got to go. He did not voluntarily leave until Lieutenant Leach put his hand, until he worked his way in between people, put his hand on the defendant in order to direct him out of the room. Um, defense counsel has indicated that he did not resist. Uh, if this goes to trial, you will hear Lieutenant Leach testify that, in fact, yes, he did pull away from him while he was attempting to handcuff him. That in itself is resisting by not submitting to, to the handcuffing. Um, we all agree that this was a, a public meeting. The state agrees that Mr. Bear did remain on topic. I believe Attorney Sisti indicated that Sue Allen decided uh, to remove him. Ultimately, um, it was Lieutenant Leach that made the decision to remove him. <coughs> Sue Allen decided uh, to have him intervene. There was discussion with respect to, uh, is Sue Allen trained in this? I believe it's addressed in depositions um, that she has had received training over, I believe it's 20 plus years. Um, what specific training that is, I don't know. I don't have her records. I don't know if defense counsel has the records, either of what her training was. Um, but that that is an issue that can come out in trial as well, and it's addressed my objection a lot. At the end of the day, um, Your Honor, 
the state believes <coughs> that this is a matter for trial, that, uh, that dismissal prior to trial is not proper. The state would rely on um, 165, New Hampshire 61, Brendan Bisbee, B-I-S-B-E-E. -E. Um, Who's the site again? 165 what? 165, New Hampshire 61. Yep. It's a 2013 case. Mm -hmm. Um, defendant's argument raises questions of constitutional law and statutory interpretation. The state should have the opportunity to present its case in its entirety and for uh, this court, the trier of fact, to determine guilt or innocence in the light most favorable to the state. Okay. Cool. TV.